Hello Internet, welcome to part two of a four-part series I'm doing on camera basics. Today I am talking about shooting in manual mode. All this means is you as the user um, are controlling the light coming into the camera rather than the camera is in its automatic settings. So you control how much light comes into the camera by adjusting three settings. That is the aperture, or um, otherwise known as the f-stop, you have the shutter speed, and then you have ISO. Aperture is just how wide your lens is, so if you have a bigger aperture, you're letting in more light. If you have a smaller aperture, you're not letting in as much light. The shutter speed is how long you are capturing the picture. So if it's a super fast shutter speed, um, you're able to like freeze motion, uh, and you know it doesn't let in as much light, and then a slower shutter speed will let in more light. Um, and then ISO is basically like gain. If you have adjusted your aperture and shutter speed, uh, you know, to your liking and it's still kind of a dark image, then you can add in some ISO, um, some artificial light, I guess you can say. So um, I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper into the, each of these different settings. Up first is aperture. Commonly you will see um, the f-stop or aperture um, listed as like f and then like a slash and then a number. So f2 or f2.8, f4. Um, that bottom denominator number just is a gauge of how um, big your aperture can be. And so that just basically means your lens is obviously letting in light, that's how it captures the picture, but the aperture is going to tell you how much light um, this lens will let in at a specific point. So when you're looking at lenses on like Amazon or wherever you know you're buying it, um, whenever you see the f you know 2.8 or f4 number, that tells you the lowest aperture it can go. So the widest it can be, the much light as it can let in. So obviously a lens with like an f1.2 or an f1.4 or f2 are your nicer lenses because they're going to be able to let in more light. So that means they're going to be better in low light situations because they can let in more light. Two terms that are associated with um, the aperture is bokeh and depth of field. Bokeh is just basically the blurriness of the picture, you know, when your subject is really in focus and then the background is really blurred out. Um, and depth of field is just how much um, you know, in your picture are you going to have in focus. So say if you have a f2 lens and you're shooting wide open, that means that you're going to get more, um, you know, like bokeh, you're going to get more of that blurry feel to your pictures because it's going to have less of your picture in focus. It's going to have a, um, you know, smaller depth of field. So say if you're taking a picture, you know, taking a portrait of a person and their eyes and their nose and their mouth are in focus, um, but maybe um, you know, the edges of their figure start to get blurry. Um, you know, that's usually when you shoot wide open, but say if you want a super sharp image, you know, you want everything in focus, um, you know, the person, then maybe you'd stop it down to like f4 or f8. Um, so, you know, at the, you know, when you start closing down your aperture, that uh, increases your depth of field and that makes more things in focus. So that means when you're taking video uh, and your aperture is, you know, more towards f1.4, f2, um, it might be a little bit harder to rack focus because your depth of field is going to be shorter so less things are going to be in focus. But if you stop it down to maybe f4, um, then maybe focusing gets a little bit easier because um, more things are going to be in focus. So moving on to shutter speed. Shutter speed is basically how long um, it takes for a picture to be captured. A common shutter speed is 1 over 60th of a second. That just means, um, you know, the mirror goes up on your DSLR uh, for a 1 60th of a second and then it shuts and then the image is captured. Uh, so that means the longer that um, the image is being captured onto your sensor, uh, the more light it's going to let in. So the uh, bigger the shutter speed, like 1 over 30, 1 over 60, uh, you're letting in more light because um, you're taking the picture for longer. Once you get um, into the smaller shutter speeds, like 1 over 400 or 1 over 800, that means that's capturing the picture in 1 over 4 hundredths of a second which is like super quick. So that means the shutter is taking that picture quicker, which means it's letting in less light. So what does that mean for your picture? 
All that means is if you're using, you know, shutter speed like 1 over 400, that means you're capturing the picture quicker, so that means you're maybe freezing motion. So say you're taking like pictures at a soccer game or something, and your kiddo is running, um, that means you can capture, you know, uh, their motion quicker. So, you know, say you want to freeze motion or you want to make sure that your picture isn't going to be blurry, then you would uh, make that shutter speed, uh, you know, something higher, like 1 over 120 or 1 over 140 or something like that. Um, but, you know, shutter speed is like 1 over 60th of a second. Do let in more light, so it is better if you are, um, you know, looking to let more light into the camera. Once you get into shutter speeds like 1 over 15 or 1 over 10, it is almost impossible to take that, like, uh, just handheld because just the shake of your hand will make the picture blurry because think about it, you're leaving that shutter open for 1 over 10th of a second rather than like 1 over 100th of a second. So you're taking that picture for longer so it encounters, you know, maybe the slight shake of your hand or something. So shutter speed for taking pictures is just the length that the picture is being taken. Uh, when you talk about the video side of things, the rule of thumb sh for shutter speed is to have your shutter speed double of what your frame rate is. So say if you're shooting 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, um, in video mode, you want to take your frame rate, so say it's 24, double it, which 24 times 2 is 48, and find the closest shutter speed to that. So that shutter speed would be 1 over 50. Now this is not like the rule, so uh, you can play around with it, it's just kind of like a guideline. Um, and so that just gives you the most natural uh, motion blur, but you can play around with it. So the last thing we're talking about is ISO, or ISO. This is basically just you adding gain, adding kind of artificial light to your picture or your video. Um, so that means, say you have your aperture set at what you want, um, you have your shutter speed set at what you want, but it is still um, too dark of an image. That is when you add in ISO. This is basically saying, look, my picture is too dark, I need it, I need some more light, so I'm gonna crank out my ISO a little bit. Now you have to be careful um, with how much you crank it because it will add grain to your picture. So, um, you know, cameras ISO range from typically like 100 to maybe like 12,000 or 100 to 6,400. Uh, so the wider your ISO range, typically the better the camera because that means you can go to a higher ISO without adding that gross grain look to it. So say a typical DSLR would be from like 100 to 12,000 ISO. So if you're taking a picture, oh it's too dark, have to crank the ISO to maybe like to 400, 500, cool, you still get a great picture. Usually I don't exceed um, like 1,000 or 2,000 ISO. Um, you know, you start, once you start getting up into that higher ISO range, your pictures and video start um, to just turn kind of gross and grainy. Um, but that is just up to you to play with, you know, um, push kind of your camera's limits, see what the highest ISO range is uh, for you. So typically you'd want to keep your ISO as low as possible. So say if you're shooting outside, it's a beautiful sunny day, you would, you know, typically want to keep your ISO at the lowest level, which would probably be ISO 100, and then you would just adjust your aperture and shutter speed accordingly. But yeah, so the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, it's just three ways to, con to control the light that is coming in to your camera. It's as simple as that. Um, but I know it can be kind of confusing in the beginning, so the best way to get better at this is to just go out and shoot. Like, don't stop shooting. Um, but if you do have any questions, leave me some comments down below and I will get back to you, or you can find me on the Twitter. I will tweet you back. Um, but yeah, look for the final two installments of this series in the coming Tuesdays. Um, and if you're familiar with my channel, I do a lot of travel videos, and at the end of May, I am going to Iceland, which I'm so excited about. Um, so I'll be bringing some cool content to the channel um, from that very soon. Um, so hit that subscribe button, let me know if you liked it, um, and find me on Instagram. Yeah, links down below. So, thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one.